students i think you have gone through the romantic criticism of wordsworth and coleridge which already we have discussed now we will be talking about another important romantic figure of english literature that is john keats though keats unlike his contemporaries didn't write a formal treatise on poetry but his views on beauty nature and poetry throughout his poems prefaces and letters which contain great critical value he is estimated as an intuitive critic who writes what he feels and particularly he has his ideas about the romantic imagination which comes closer to william wordsworth than coleridge or shelley and as all of you know that keats was a great worshipper of beauty and he expressed his particular views about beauty as a part of the poetry but today we are going to discuss about his concept of negative capability which is very known throughout the critical world of english literature and this concept of negative capability actually it came from his letters to his younger brothers george and tom kitts which he wrote on 22nd december 1818 in his letter he is discussing about the contemporary poetic output as well as the poetic process that the poets were experiencing and discussing amongst them he is telling that the excellence of every art is its intensity capable of making all disagreeables evaporate from their being in close relationship with beauty and truth so he is telling by elaborating his practical experience with certain contemporaries that excellence of every art is its intensity already we have seen in coleridge coleridge emphasizes on the intensity of as artistic process particularly in the secondary imagination in the secondary imagination the distinctly different ideas images they blend under intense aesthetic perception so kids is also almost coming in the same way by telling the excellence of every art is its intensity 
So without intensity on the part of an artist, the art or the art that emerges from the process of creativity cannot be excellent. And it should be capable of making all disagreeables. Again, going back to Coleridge, he said that the role of the secondary imagination is to blend. It is an assemblastic power. So it blends all the disparities. And Keats is telling it is capable of making all disagreeables. Evaporate from their being in close relationship with beauty and truth. So that difference will evaporate. The disagreeables will evaporate. When they will be in close relationship with beauty and truth. That is capital B and capital T. So every art or poetry, they should be the manifestation of absolute beauty and truth by absolving or dissolving all the disagreeables through intensity of poetic imagination. He is telling, examine King Lear and this exemplified throughout. But in this picture we have unpleasantness without any momentous depth of speculation excited in which to bury its repulsiveness. So he is giving the example of Shakespeare's King Lear and he is telling, here you can find how the beauty and truth emerges by dissolving the then later on in page 178 where he is telling all these things at the end he is telling they only serve to convince me however how superior humor is to wit in respect to enjoyment these may these men say Things which make one start without making one feel, they are all alike. So he is telling that humor is superior to wit in respect of enjoyment. Why? Because humor has the capacity to dissolve the disagreeables. Therefore, the poetic process must take into account the disparities and the disagreeables and under the intensity of imagination, it must dissolve everything or evaporate everything that are disagreeable and the wholeness of being the wholeness of the unit of absolute beauty and truth must emerge. Then he is elaborating in the middle part of page 179 that a man of achievement especially in literature and which Shakespeare possessed so enormously, I mean negative capability, that is when Man is capable of being in uncertainties. So he is telling then how this absolute beauty and truth can be realized or manifested by evaporating the disagreeables. He is telling that it should be achieved through negative capability. And which he, according to Keats, Shakespeare possessed so enormously. Shakespeare being the great artist, he had that quality that is the negative capability. What is negative capability? He is telling that when man is capable of being in uncertainties, so negative capability 
means it is a capability or a power to remain in uncertainty state of uncertainty without making an attempt to go beyond so every artist must have that capability to remain in a state of uncertainty if you can't remain in uncertainty if you have clarity which is the opposition to uncertainty then you cannot be an artist you will rather be a thinker or you will be a great intellectual but you cannot be a poet you cannot be an artist why mysteries doubts without any irritable reaching after fact and reason so he is elaborating that state of uncertainty what is state of uncertainty mysteries doubts without any irritable reaching after fact and reason when we subscribe to a state of mystery or doubt without making an effort or without being compelled to go for finding out the fact and reason so that is a state of mind which is artistic you just try to follow that means suppose you are going to make a painting so before the painting if you decide everything and be fixed that i will draw a natural scenery with a hill with two heads of hill one river in between one tree and all that but suppose in the process of painting your mind suddenly went to some other experience and you thought that better i should have two trees on both sides of the river but you will decide no already i have decided everything is fine so i can't change it so that cannot be a great painting that cannot be a great art art means which should be organic it should be organic it should grow by itself the duty of the artist is to begin with an idea but the idea will take the artist the artist will not dictate it so this negative capability is an organic concept so he is telling the artist must be with mysteries the artist must be with doubts and he should not simply go for reason and fact because reason and fact brings a full stop brings a finality and finality is not an art art is infinity going towards infinity remaining in infinity indecisive so composing one poem never an never a poet can claim that i have expressed everything i don't have to express anything about it okay then he is going further by telling coleridge for instance would let go by a fine isolated very similitude caught from the penetralium of mystery from being incapable of remaining content with half knowledge so coleridge in this way always liked to be remaining in a state of very similitude from the mystery as a poet he subscribed to the concept of mystery without mystery without uncertainty without doubt you can't be an artist so the mystery should be there suppose the poet is composing a poem about a particular bird 
take for example john kid says ode to the nightingale if you go to the poem nightingale you will find this is a fairly long poem he begins with the singing of a nightingale he hears the sound of a nightingale singing and throughout the poem he is asking the question whether it is a voice of this whether it is a voice of that whether it is expressing something like this whether it is expressing something like that and it is a beautiful poem it is one of the immortal poem had the poet been very certain what the nightingale is singing there could never have been a poem or even if there could have been a poem the poem would have been very drab very flat having no interest and this pursued through volumes would perhaps take us no further than this that with a great poet the sense of beauty overcomes every other consideration or rather obliterates all consideration so he is telling first of all the poet must be content with half knowledge you know something but you don't know everything that is the state of mind on the part of a poet or an artist and the second thing he is telling the second characteristic is that the great poet must have a sense of beauty which overcomes every other consideration the poet must be anxious for realizing a beauty here a sense of beauty beauty means harmony beauty means the ideal or the perfection out of the ordinary which already we have discussed from aristotle till now so he is telling it have these two qualities the state of uncertainty the power to remain with the half knowledge not striving to know everything clear and the ultimate sense of beauty towards which the poetic endeavor must go so in this way he is giving out his idea of the negative capability and he is telling finally silly's poem is out and there are words about its being objected to as much as queen mab was poor silly i think he has his quota of good qualities in sudh la write soon to your most sincere friend and affectionate brother so he is telling that silly is a good poet he also remains in that state of uncertainty and he also makes endeavor to reach at the beauty but sometimes silly is having more clarity which is not the characteristics of a great poet because silly was a revolutionary poet so he knows or he wants to know everything about a particular state of mind so in his consideration shakespeare is a great poet but silly is not so in this way kids is elaborating about and as this is the part of your syllabus so we have to just look and you can prepare the short questions for one mark and two mark as well as for five mark from this 
so there can be such question the two more questions like what are the two important characteristics of a good artist or a poet already we have discussed the endeavor to realize the beauty and to remain in the state of uncertainty and about negative capability we can have this five mark question so you go through it